Welcome to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Gajawa. My crew and I hope to bring you a bunch of tips and techniques to make your model railroading more fun and a lot easier. You can check us out on Facebook or YouTube, or you can get us at modelrailroadbackshop at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm here to show you an inexpensive and versatile glue, which probably a lot of you have never tried, but your kids have. Uh, it's the Elmer's Washable School Glue. Now, I use this for quite a few uh, things on my layout. Uh, one of them is to make signs. I uh, make the signs on my word processor, uh, change them to different shapes and sizes, and I also cut them out of magazines. Now, you can, if they're thick enough, you can cut them out of the magazine, use them just like this, and glue them on the buildings. But what I like to do is glue them to 10 thousandths styrene. And it's a pretty simple procedure. You just put a little bit on the back of the sign, st stick it right on the styrene. doesn't have to be straight because we're going to trim it later. This is a depot sign. All my depots have the different names on them. And you just let that dry for a little bit. Here's one I've done before and I've cut it out. Now I use the same glue and coat the back of the sign and you can glue it right on the building. This is a Wolf Lake. This is for my steel mill, Illinois Steel Company. Uh, they own the Illinois Junction Railroad here. Uh, here's another sign I made, a little bit bigger. Now, I've used a really neat thing that Plastistruck makes. It's wire with a plastic styrene coating on it, as you can see here. And you just cut it off to whatever length you want, and it glue it right to the back of the sign, then trim it. And it's really durable. I mean, these, you won't snap these off uh, as you're reaching over the layout. Um, I've also used regular 6x6 styrene to make these signs. And I've glued my blocks signs on them so the engineers know where the trains are supposed to start and stop, uh, according to the dispatcher. Uh, these aren't quite as durable, but... Uh, and I'm probably going to switch to the Plastistruct metal in the future. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is that cat sign. That was out of a magazine. And here it is glued to the side of a building. Now you can look through the magazines and maybe buy, like, the rental store here. And these other signs. And they're just glued to the buildings. What's nice about this water-soluble glue is it comes right off. So if you mess it up, you can pop it off, a little bit of water, uh, take care of it, and there you go. We're back with another idea for the school glue, and that's signs for loads. Here's some loads I did for a friend of mine. He has a Birmingham Southern Railroad that he models, made by U.S. Steel. Here's some for my Illinois Steel Company, based out of Calumet, Illinois. Um, this is the same procedure. This is just uh, go to your favorite word processor or art program, print off your signs, write on the paper. These, I just go directly right on the load with these. A little bit of school glue on the back. Put them appropriately on the load. Let them dry. That's how simple that is. I'll have to do a clinic on these loads because my friends really like them. Um, the same thing. Just put a little school glue on there, position it, tack it down. It's done. Ready to go. And don't forget, you can use other colors. Uh, you don't have to use white paper. You can get a variety of paper make your signs in and we're back with more fun with school glue 
Elmer's washable school glue sticks. I like to use a lot of people on my locomotives and cabooses. And it doesn't take much to take a little bit on this guy's foot. What's nice about this, it's purple, but it dries clear. You have instant conductor. I got this guy here. I'm going to put this conductor on this locomotive. A little bit on his feet. Find a spot to stick him. Try to make it look like his hands are on the railing. Let it sit for a while and uh, that glue will stick on there. That's cool. I've got these guys. Uh, these are from Walther's. You can get them. Prizer makes a lot of neat people too. Uh, here's one on this crew man. He's not wearing the new regulated orange and white stripes, but not all people do that. Now, I've also done this, put guys hanging on the side of a car for a photo session. Uh, I wouldn't leave that guy on the car. Uh, but it is kind of neat to have a scene like that, maybe in a workshop where you're going to have a car. So, cool, huh? As I said, this is a pretty useful product. Um, I also use it for painting. Uh, when you have an object like this that has very small contact points, there's a very hard way to hold this. I've tried double sticky tape, but it seems like it just blows off when you put the airbrush to it or if you're using an aerosol can. So I'll just take some of this glue and glue the object right to the wood here. This is just an old paint stick I had laying around. You could use a piece of cardboard or whatever. And I'll just glue those to that and let it set, let it dry. Here's another object. I'm going to paint this silver, so I put it on a different stick. I do a lot of my painting outside for little objects like this. Just get a rattle can from the hardware store, take it outside, spray it, let it dry, and you're done. And then it just pops right off when you're ready to stick it to the building or whatever. Another use I found for the school glue is making backdrops. Uh, this I actually cut out of the box after I made the full replica from Walther's Cornerstone water tank. And I thought, this might work as a backdrop building. So I basically do the same thing. Use the school glue, cover it real good, get all the corners. And then what I'll do is I'll glue this to a piece of foam core. Now put some weights on this. Let this dry. One thing that's really cool about if you use a weight is to put a piece of plastic in here. That way the weight's not going to stick to any glue that might ooze out. So I'll set this aside and show you what this foam core is like if you haven't seen it. While that water tank's drying, let me show you this foam core. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. That's probably the easiest place to find it since there's so many around. I'm sure art supplies have it. It's a paper product on each end with a dense foam in the middle. And it cuts really nice with a sharp hobby knife. Couple scores. right apart. Leaves a pretty nice edge. I've used this for a lot of background buildings like the water tank. Put the glue on, put the object on it, and then cut it out. Here's the water tank that I cut out after putting it on the foam board. I think it looks pretty good. What I will do is attach it right to the backdrop 
you won't get that little lean as it's leaning to the backdrop. But I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, for free, can't beat it. This is the Arrowhead Yard Office for my railroad in suburban Chicagoland. I've added the signs on the side, the safety slogan near the doorway, and I also use the stick glue to stick the figures on the inside, the papers on the decks, and you can add it for safety slogans, and of course your profits. Notice the AGW profits always trending upward. Pretty cool. I really enjoy using this stuff, and remember it is removable. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Model Railroad Back Shop. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube, and you can see my railroad, the Atlantic Great Western, on Facebook. Thanks for watching.